please can someone close the door here so that we can start with our meeting. Uh, my apologies to all IGFSA members, but the previous meeting they were so engaged they just refused to stop. Uh, Jennifer, can you inform us on remote participation? Um, may I invite the other members of the executive committee to join me on the dice? <laughs> Sorry? Eduardo not here? Uh. <laughs> and once again, can I invite those who are not planning to attend the IGFSA General Assembly to leave the room. My apologies. Our meeting was supposed to have started at half past one, but the previous meeting, they were just moving on and on, and now sort of the last people who attended the previous meeting are leaving the room. And for the transcription, it's Marcus Kummer speaking. I'm the chair of the IGFSA Executive Committee. We are holding our annual General Assembly that is called for by our bylaws and our bylaws also say the General Assembly is valid regardless of the number of participants. So unfortunately there are many overlapping meetings and I think the MAG, meet, the MAG members of the IGFSA had a parallel meeting so I see some of you are here but some others are in the other meeting where they meet the Under Secretary General of the UN. So all this is very unfortunate, and we were also told that this room will be used as an overflow room, so I think we'll be cut off brutally, I think, by 2.45. And so we have just about an hour at our disposal. Let's be quick and uh, efficient. Uh, I have sent out an agenda. Uh, I don't know whether we can show that on the screen. Uh, but it is a traditional agenda, uh, approval of the summary record of last year's General Assembly, proposed change in the Articles of Association, Executive Committee election, and then adoption of the reports, approval of the budget, and uh, one agenda item on fundraising, crowdfunding, and then again uh, discharge of the activity of the Executive Committee, which means essentially approval of uh, the work of the executive committee and any other business. My suggestion would be, I suppose, that we devote most of the time will be for the election of the four open slots in uh, the executive committee, and that would be the most time-consuming agenda item. But before doing that, I suggest that we adopt the proposed uh, a change in the Articles of Association. Again, I have informed you in writing of what it's all about. And, the, uh, and I sent out the full Article 5 on membership, but it's just one sentence that is new, and that's introducing the notion of a member in good standing. And I read the sentence that we propose to insert. Any member who has remained current on the association's annual membership dues is considered a member in good standing. Voting rights are limited to members in good standing. Do we have agreement to approve this uh, proposed change in our bylaws? Is nobody speaking against it? Or can we ask, you would like to say something? Yeah, you agree, okay. All right, may I ask those who agree to raise their hands so that we... And I think there is, without counting the individual votes, there seems to be a majority. Can we see who is against the proposed change? There's nobody uh, in favor... Uh, there's nobody against the proposed change, so the proposal has been adopted, and from now on, 
only members who have paid their annual membership dues are uh, allowed to take part in elections and have a right to vote. And that is also, our membership year is not the same as the calendar year. It goes in essence from General Assembly to General Assembly. So if you pay today, you have paid for the year behind you, and then you can vote today in this year's General Assembly. And from tomorrow onwards, it'll be the year 20, essentially 2019 from today's General Assembly to next year's General Assembly. I think we have currently uh, more than 60 members in good standing. Uh, is that correct? That's correct. We just have a few more Okay, so that is actually not a bad percentage. We have, I think, uh, 190 or so registered members and uh, a good third of them have actually paid their membership dues based on experience of other not-for-profit associations, at least in Switzerland. That is actually quite a good average. A yes, please. Marilyn has a question. I have a question, um, and I'm, I'm going to pose it on behalf of uh, many of the new members. And um, uh, I think for... Um, I don't think it's clear, or I don't think it was clear for people who are joining today that they're paying for the past year. I think that most of them, I'm looking at some of them who I recruited back here from Syracuse University as an example, I think most of them assumed that they were paying um, for the next year, L let me just finish this, which would include whatever decisions are taken at the AGM. So I guess I would um, note that it might be important for us as an executive committee to show some flexibility that uh, people who pay today are paying for a year from today, which means actions of today, but also a year forward. Could we consider that? For, for new members, yes, that makes sense. That was always how we handled it. You're a member automatically with the payment of the membership dues, but obviously you don't pay for what is behind you pay going forward. So new members, you have paid your membership dues also for this coming year. So, but for the old members, yes. that means you are current, you have paid up to today. Thank you for that, Marilyn. With that, can we, can we proceed then to uh, the executive committee election? We have uh, statements of interest posted on the IGFSA website, and I think by now, we have, uh, is it six or seven uh, candidates for four open slots? We have two executive committee members who are seeking renewal. That would be renewal for a two-year term, as the first term was only one year, and essentially completion of the first term. And then we have... Uh, other members who indicated their interest. I also had an expression of interest just now from a MAG member who is not in the room, but he promised to be back as soon as possible. That is a Nacho, but I don't know whether he'd be able to make it. But in any case, may I ask with our uh, executive committee members who seek re-election to briefly introduce themselves and sum up what's in your statement of interest. Uh, Marilyn is first, alphabetically. Cade is ahead of Doria. <laughs> Thanks. My name is Marilyn Cade. Let me first of all thank all of you for coming. I know it's an extremely busy um, IGF, and yet the AGM, the annual um, uh, general meeting that we have, is very important because it's really your opportunity and our opportunity for our members to tell us what our priorities should be. This is a working executive committee, and um, I, in my statement of interest, I made a very clear point that anyone who is standing needs to be able to uh, confirm that they're able to dedicate the time and the physical resources, because we do not fund the time and travel of the executive committee in order to be able to fulfill our mission. Um, I take the commitment of time very seriously and am confident and am committed to continuing the work that I do. 
most of you who are here who are affiliated with the NRIs, the national and regional initiatives, know that I have been heavily involved with them along with the Secretariat. And during the time that, since December of 2015, we have together grown the number of national initiatives from 57 to over 111, which is particularly, I think, important for us as the IGF Support Association to take into account. The majority of those are coming in are from developing countries and the small grants that we give and the um, communication support that we can give is particularly important to the, small, the smaller countries who don't have a lot of resources in their country to turn to to do the fundraising that is needed. One of the things I think we need to do better and more of is communicate more with our members. I made a suggestion that we um, start doing a two-page quarterly uh, newsletter type update and also that we hold an occasional webinar. Um, several ICANN meetings ago, I launched an informal gathering of the NRI coordinators and recently, uh, IGFSA has stepped up as the host of those meetings and many of the coordinators and people affiliated with the uh, NRIs are able to meet informally at the ICANN meetings and to exchange uh, and continuing to build the network and the identity of the NRIs. So looking ahead, um, a final point I would make is um, we do not have a sufficient and diverse enough pool of uh, sponsors. And while uh, crowdsourcing funding is a very interesting and worthwhile strategy, I believe we should be uh, much more organized and um, uh, active in reaching out to uh, further corporates and to other organizations that can make significant um, financial contributions in larger amounts of money so we can keep up with the growth of the NRIs in the next two years. I believe we will, be, we will grow from over 111 to at least 150 to 160. The final thing I'll say is um, we are at one of those windows again where if we don't step up our communications and the work that we do, we're not going to be able to fulfill our mission. We're going to, the Plenty Pot, the ITU Plenty Potentiary will end shortly. The uh, UN Panel on Digital Cooperation will come up with recommendations, and the NRIs are going to be bombarded with questions at home about what they should be debating, what they should be talking about, and what resources might come as expert speakers. So I see a great opportunity for us, but I also see some risk if we're not able to really enhance the um, support that we provide. We don't direct the policy activities of the IGF Secretariat, but we do provide tremendous support and fundraising that helps them to fulfill their mission as well. Thank you. Thank you. Avri? Thank you. <coughs> I'm Avri Doria. I'm currently on the Executive Committee, and I'm asking for your vote to continue on it. Uh, one of the most important things to me over the last couple of years has been sort of the, the structural foundation of the IGFSA as we moved from being sort of sheltered and protected by ISOC to becoming more freestanding. And, and so to me, that has been a very important part of, of what I've helped with and, and what I've focused on. One of the things that I'm very focused on is how do we get the members more involved, both in, in sort of initiating various fundraising things. It's something we've talked about for the last two years, but we're still churning on, though now we have started talking about ways to do, to do um, other ways of doing funding among individuals. Um, part of why I think the IGFSA is important is because the IGF is important. But the IGF's importance sort of comes from what its foundations are. And, and as, as Marilyn said, the, the nationals and the regionals are important to support not 
per se, but because they are the foundation that the rest of the IGF sort of builds on and can grow on. We have changed the mix over the years of the kind of support we do from giving just a blank sum to the IGF itself, but the more discrete funding of the national and regionals. And I think that was a very important change for us because we're building that, that, that global presence that can sustain the IGF as time goes on. So uh, for those reasons, for, for the structural integrity of the IGFSA and its continued support of the regionals to support the main organization, I'm asking for your vote and, and I'm hoping that I do get it and remain on the executive committee. Thank you. Thank you, Avery. And then we have four candidates uh, who are not members of the executive committee. We have Kosi Amesinu, Mark Hanfei, Jacqueline Morris, and Ilmini Rubin. So in alphabetical order, uh, Kossi, would you like to say a few words? Are you in the room or did you go to the... Yes, yeah, yes, yeah. right at the back. I'm here. Can you hear me? Hello? We can hear you. I'm sorry for my bad English, but... <laughs> You must understand. Uh, I make my candidacy for this uh, committee to... Can you go a bit closer to the microphone? We can hardly hear you. Hello? Okay. I make my candidacy for this committee and to share my small experience having now in the in my new position in my ministry, uh, working for funding collection for development, some experience get there, uh, can be used to look for funding also for IGF support association on the bilateral and multilateral organization. It's essentially the reason of my candidacy here. Thank you, Marcos. Thank you. Uh, Marilyn just asked a procedural question whether uh, somebody working for a government can serve on the executive committee. I don't think our bylaws uh, say anything on who can serve or not. I think that would be more a political appreciation of whether or not that is appropriate. Uh, next uh, candidate on the alphabetical list will be Makan. Yes, please. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Makan Fai. Uh, I've been an IGFSA member since its inception, paying member. Uh, I have uh, worked for the United Nations for uh, 33 years. I retired two years ago. And uh, since the start of the WSIS, I've been coordinating the WSIS activities for the African continent, especially for the ministerial uh, uh, ministers in Africa on ICT. And uh, since the beginning of uh, IGF also, I've been uh, coordinating the activities of the African continent in the framework of uh, the African Gov Internet Governance Forum. Uh, uh, when I retired also, I continued working with uh, the African IGF, to which I'm the secretary, and uh, I uh, organized the last meeting uh, in Khartoum uh, uh, last week. And uh, we have been benefiting from funding from uh, IGFSA and Marcus country came to Khartoum and also made a presentation on IGFSA. Uh, my endeavor is to really extend the reach of IGFSA in uh, Africa and get enlisted uh, as uh, many members as possible because I, I coordinate a big list of uh, uh, association individuals and, uh, in Africa and uh, I will uh, contact them, request them to 
joined the IGFSA and also uh, in Africa, many uh, national NRIs also have been getting support from uh, IGFSA, even though those of those NRIs coordinators, are, most of them are not members of IGFSA. I will make sure that they are all members. Currently, uh, as a retiree, I'm the president of the former UN staff based in Senegal, and I coordinate also the West African Internet Governance Forum uh, as the planning committee, and I'm the secretary of the African Internet Governance Forum. Thank you. I hope you get your vote. Thank you, Makan. Uh, Jacqueline Morris will be the next. Is she online, Jennifer? Well, her statement is up on our website. And she's not online. Um, her, but her statement is up on the website. Uh, Nilmini Rubin, are you in the room? Oh, yes, please, yes. Hi, I'm Nilmini Rubin. There we go. Speak in the microphone so people can hear you. So, hi, I'm Nilmini Rubin. I work for an engineering consulting company called Tetra Tech. And I lead a team of 170 people that work on um, international development projects on both internet and energy. Um, we do projects for the World Bank, the African Development Aid, and, and other big donors. My passion lies in connecting all people, regardless of age and gender, um, to the internet and electricity. I feel like those are the, that, those are the, that's the juice of, of modernity. And I'm standing today and ask for your vote to serve on the IGF Support Association Executive Committee because I strongly believe in the goals of IGFSA. I've been very active in it. And, um, and I'm also here um, in honor of my friend Manu Bardwaj, who um, I read his statement last year when he was running for IGFSA. He was late from his plane. And, um, and uh, I read his statement and he was elected to the executive committee and um, very tragically he died this year and um, and I felt very strongly about running uh, to, to take his place and, and continuing his work. He was only 39. Um, I have been very active in IGF uh, in addition to being active in the IGF USA. I've attended IGF uh, meetings in Geneva, Mexico, Brazil and spoken at the IGF Afghanistan meeting um, through through Skype. Um, my background is fairly different. I worked in politics and policy. I wrote the Digital Gap Act for Chairman Race, which uh, frames would frame US policy uh, to internet access. It's passed the House of Representatives and the Senate Foreign Relations Committee it awaits a passage by the, the US Senate. And I was very active um, in the last administration supporting uh, global Connect with Manu. Um, I, I think that my background in the private sector, um, in politics and, and formally as, as in, in lobbying and fundraising would be helpful to the IGF, especially as we get our heads around how to raise more money more sustainably for the IGF SA. I have a lot of experience in asking and receiving money for organizations. So I ask for your support and thank you very much. Thank you. And uh, meanwhile, I have also sent out uh, an email, forwarded an email I have received from Nacho, Miguel Ignacio Estrada, who has also announced his interests. Uh, he is one of the founder members of IGF Argentina, of the committee members of LAC IGF, and it's also a MAG member. And he has been a member of IGFSA for three years and expresses his interest to be on the executive committee. With that, we can proceed to the voting and uh, I will ask uh, our secretary, Jennifer, to be in charge of the counting of the votes. You have all the names. The candidates are up on the website and the additional candidate I have sent as an email. So write the four names you would like to fill the four slots with. And we would also need some help then for the counting. Uh, I'm looking to my 
EC members. Obviously, the candidates would not be appropriate to have the candidates voting, but could I ask Edmund to help with the counting and maybe also some members from the floor? Uh, yes. Dustin, would, one more. Uh, help me out, I have a black. <laughs> I know you well, but Tracy, yes. <laughs> Tracy, of course. My apologies. Yes. Thanks, I have a point of order. It's my understanding if we think about the procedure we followed last year, so let me just verify, we don't have a ballot, we're all supposed to individually write the names. Is that right? We, we don't have a ballot prepared, we're just giving people pieces of paper. Okay. I got it. And um, we're accepting uh, email votes from remote participants, okay. We have already received some email okay. votes. So secondly, I believe procedurally, we need both counting and then validating. So you would have two people maybe counting and then you have two people verifying the vote. This is customary when, uh, rather than just having one group during the counting, or are you thinking you're only gonna have one group counting? You can do it either way, but let's just- I thought one group doing the counting and <laughs> trust them, but if you're more comfortable with uh, having uh, somebody validating, then you can. I, I was just trying to go back to what we did last year and be sure we were clear on what we I were I don't asking. think we had a separate validating procedure, but if you're more comfortable, I'm fine with that. I think we just need to get on with it. <laughs> That's what I think, yes. Okay, so you write down four names you would like to select for the executive committee. And thus that will take quite a while. That will allow us to go through the rest of the proceedings and hopefully at the end we have a fully... Uh, sorry? Uh, oh, yes. There. Yeah, yeah, Miguel Ignacio. Uh, Jennifer, we need to add Nacho's name on the list, Miguel Ignacio Estrada. Yeah, correct. And obviously, I can also ask the last, is there anybody else who would like to present him or herself as a candidate? That's, yeah. Yes, please, you would like to be a candidate? Uh, sorry, I can't hear you. Microphone, please. I can't. Hello? Can you hear me? Yeah. Hi. This is Bauram Ariel from Nepal IGF. It's, uh, I'm vice chair of Nepal IGF. Can you repeat your statement? This is Bauram Ariel from Nepal IGF. Yes. So I'm not saying from Asia, so uh, I'd like to stand as a uh, candidate for from that region. Okay, you nominate yourself as a candidate. That's fine. Can you make sure that your name is spelled properly? Okay. Okay, now while the voting is underway, can we proceed with our regular agenda items? We have adopted the agenda. Now the second agenda item is approval of the summary record of the 2017 General Assembly. It has been posted on our website for quite a while. Uh, 
Are there any comments on the uh, summary record of last year's General Assembly? That does not seem to be the case. Can I take it then that we approve the summary record of last year's General Assembly? With that, it is approved. Yes, please. I have another query. In, in order for the Secretary to verify that it's a member in good standing, that means we have to sign our votes. We, do, uh, we just passed. We pa only the members. Now, okay. We have pa changed our bylaws. Yes. Only members who have paid their annual membership dues are entitled to vote. Now, is there anyone in the room who is not in good standing, who has not paid the annual membership dues, shall we put it that way? Sorry? You can vote for, you can vote for four candidates. We have four seats to be filled. Obviously, we don't have secret votes, so we don't need to fill in the... Uh, you don't need to sign the ballot paper with your name, but can we also ask for the good record that you sign your name on another sheet so that we know who has taken part in the vote? And we can check. We have a list of those who are in good standing, who are current, who have paid their membership fees. So the easiest thing would be if you fold it in half and sign your name on one bit of the paper and sign the four names on the other bit of paper and then we can validate whether they have been paid or not. And we trust that you're honest and we trust uh, that you uh, don't vote if you haven't paid your membership fee. Uh, with that, we come to number five, which is adoption of the contents of the reports and financial statements for the year. Again, I have, uh, they have been up on our website for a few days, uh, I think at least a week. The uh, report is fairly uh, straightforward. It just shows uh, the activities of the association it refers, it starts with last year's General Assembly. Last year we had two members of the Executive Committee up for renewal, Tarek Kamel and Jameson Olufuye, and we had a new incoming uh, Executive Committee member, and that was Manu Badwaj. And sadly, Manu uh, passed away in uh, July, and uh, we uh, ask all the members to honor Manu's memories. And uh, I would also uh, like to ask you for a few minutes, a, few, a short moment of silence to honor his memory. Thank you. And we held five meetings over the course of the year. And uh, we had, as Avri said in her statement, we had to uh, restructure ourselves as uh, ISOC withdrew as was originally foreseen after two years they withdrew their initial support so we are now a self-standing organization and we are supported thanks to Edmund uh, from Dot Asia organization and Jennifer also from Dot Asia serves as a secretary and performs uh, running the website and you may have noticed that the website has been upgraded and it looks a lot better now and with that uh, I think we are up and running. It took us also a while to uh, change the banking arrangements but those of you who benefited from uh, our support saw that we are up and running and working. Last year we uh, accepted 18 new members and that brought the total of membership up to 190. Uh, fundraising, we received a total of 117,000 US dollars, so 500 in contributions. 
we definitely could have done better. Our main contributors are ICANN and the number resource organization who contributed 50,000 US dollars each. But we also had a smaller contribution from the uh, Col Colombian CCO Internet SAS 5,000, 2,500 from Amazon. And we had a contribution from Google that is of 10,000 US dollars that is earmarked for enhancing the accessibility at the IGF. And we used that for providing real-time transcription to the intercessional calls, essentially the MAG calls, but also some other calls where the people with uh, accessibility issues were involved, that is the, uh, essentially the DCAD. And uh, to remember that since our inception four years ago, we have raised a total of uh, three quarters of a million US dollars. And again, as Avri said, we have shifted our attention and we moved away from giving the major, uh, the bulk of our contributions to the UN and we have given more and more to the NRIs. Last year, we also uh, decided to uh, provide a fellowship to uh, Anya. She's the IGF focal point, the NRI focal point in the IGF secretariat. And that is also according to our bylaws that provide for direct support to the IGF secretariat. <coughs> but the major shift was away from the UN Trust Fund more to the NRIs. And uh, the dynamics, as Marilyn already said in her statement, uh, it's difficult to keep up with their growth. We have in uh, 2018 already contributed a total of 91,500 to the NRIs and that is as of 1st of November, but we have since then already made additional uh, contributions. And that brings me uh, to a point, uh, some of these con uh, requests for funding are extremely late and obviously we cannot change the rules in the middle of a game, but as we are at the end of our year and going forward, I would advocate that we set a deadline of at least one month ahead of a meeting for making a request. I discussed that with the IGF Secretariat and uh, Anya also thinks that would be a very reasonable request in the interest of everybody that sometimes the uh, NRIs in question get actually the funding only after the event. That means also we then don't benefit as much in terms of getting recognition during the event. So that is a suggestion that we will change that and make it explicit that we would like to have the requests one month ahead and obviously we would be flexible in interpreting that there are, may always be unforeseen circumstances. Yes, Marilyn. Thanks. Uh, Marcus, I did want to make a comment, but Jen mentioned to me that she needed to ask you to take uh, some action. Do you want to do that first? Um, um, hello, this is Jennifer Chung for the record. Um, once, when we come to the agenda item where we take the votes in, if you could please come up, I will be sitting down there so I can double check that you are a um, member that is active before you give me your vote. So you can fold up your vote, give me your name, I'll check, and then you give me the vote. Thank you. Thank you. This is actually very much like we do voting in Switzerland. We have, <laughs> we have our, our voting certificate, so to speak, we hand in. That means we are allowed to vote, and then we have what we actually vote and that gets into the uh, box. But that's why I suggested write your name separately on a separate piece of paper that will also facilitate the checking. Thank, Thank you. you for that. Thank you. Um, before I make my, ask my question, um, but we're gonna do that soon since you have to count the votes and we're running out of time. We have to be out of here in, in a few minutes, like 30 minutes, is that right? Uh, you said we needed to. Uh, I think uh, they, by quarter two as far as I understand but yes we have to hurry up yes. okay um, so um, I I actually am not comfortable with our being uh, too rigorous in setting a deadline uh, because I am very familiar with the planning challenges of um, an NRI since I uh, am involved with one 
not one that is eligible to receive funding, but um, many of the uh, NRIs, in particular from <coughs> the developing countries, may receive final notice quite late from their governments where they can finally confirm a date that is suitable to have a high-level speaker from their government. So I guess I'd like to hear in particular from some of the NRIs, um, uh, particularly the smaller ones who don't have a lot of resources, on um, what is a reasonable uh, time frame for them and whether it could be even a two-stage approach where they give us a uh, confirmed heads up that they are uh, validated by the IGF Secretariat, they have a target date, uh, but will not have a final date, just so we're not cutting people out who in particular benefit from the, um, I understand the regionals are very different, they have stat, tend to have more resources, they have a longer planning cycle, but for some of the smaller ones, I think we could find ourselves in a situation where uh, some of the smaller ones who particularly benefit uh, could be disadvantaged by too long a uh, time frame. Thank you, Marilyn. Well, the uh, IGF uh, uh, Secretariat, ANYA, the NRA focal point, uh, actually supports this. It will also be helpful, but obviously we have to interpret this with a certain amount of flexibility and that you can change the date of the meeting. That will not speak against uh, the request itself and see it as an aspiration, aspirational deadline, but just to make sure it's in everybody's interest to have it as early as possible. And usually one month ahead, I think, would be very helpful. But we will interpret it with flexibility. So we had this year so far nine regional and sub-regional IGF and 31 national. And they are on the uh, flyer. We have, uh, actually, we can actually distribute this. Sure. Oh. Sure. And as I said, this is as of 1st of November, and since then there have already been new changes. We also, at the very last meeting of the Executive Committee, agreed to make a contribution of 10,000 US dollars to the UN IGF Trust Fund. That is, while we are shifting our priorities to the NRIs, this means nevertheless not neglecting the UN IGF Trust Fund. And this amount has been transferred into the account of the UN in New York. And it brings the total contributions to the UN to $270,000. And lastly, there is uh, some outreach, communications miscellaneous, as again, as Marilyn has already alluded to, we had various events. We used to raise awareness and recruit new members. And uh, we did that at NRI meetings, but also MAG meetings and ICANN meetings. The last such meeting took place in uh, Barcelona at ICANN 63. And this is our activities report. Are there questions or comments on the activities report? And together with the activities report goes the financial overview, which is not a financial statement approved by or prepared by the accountant, but it is just uh, my uh, layman's uh, view of presenting it. It shows that he had a balance uh, per 31st of October of $77,925. It explains the contributions or dimensions. It explains the expenditures to uh, regional, sub-regional IGFs of $31,500 to uh, national IGFs uh, for $60,000, so a total went to the NRIs of 91,500. 91, we had the fellowship for ANYA, which was a total of 54,000. And then we had some smaller expenses. We had the captioning from the accessibility fund that was close to 3,000, so there is still some money left there. We had the total expenses of close to 150,000. And now we have some reserved funds 
We still have a contingency fund of $10,000. We have the contribution to the trust fund I already mentioned, but in essence, we have disposable funds as per now of 44,000 US dollars. So it is clear that will not go very far and we will have to make, uh, step up our efforts to do a fund raising. With that, uh, can I ask this August Assembly to adopt the contents of the report and the financial overview statement? Are there questions or comments? This does not seem to be the case. Can I take it then that uh, these documents have been adopted? As there is no objection, I can say these documents have been adopted. And approval of annual budget based upon a recommendation by the Executive Committee. Obviously, we don't have a budget in figures as we don't know yet what funds we will have at our disposal. But uh, based on past activities, again, our proposal to the membership is to devote the majority, most of our budget in support of the NRIs. But we have also said on behalf of the Executive Committee that we look at making another contribution of 20,000 US dollars to the UN IGF Trust Fund to keep uh, showing to the UN that we remain uh, responsible and partner to the UN. Does this meet the approval of the General Assembly? I can already see some heads nodding. Are there comments? votes of support or votes of dissent. This does not seem to be the case, so I take it then that we have the approval of the General Assembly to move forward in that direction. And the last substantive item before coming to the discharge of the activity and any other business would be fundraising and crowdfunding. You have seen, I sent out an email yesterday with a sort of better version of a crowdfunding action. Some member has already uh, responded, that is uh, joined in in the crowdfunding. Obviously there is much room for improvement there. Yeah. All right, I know the one I'm going to listen to next. Is that? We are stop now. The first stop. We are going to listen to next. So, if you get your music to choose, you are joining us. No, no, no. Okay. I'm not sure. Zero nine four six zero zero nine nine five. And then zero eight zero nine zero three. Okay, there's some voice in the background that we don't know what it is, but uh, in any case, we will not have time here to go into depth in crowdfunding, but uh, uh, maybe, uh, Austin, would you like to say a few words as you were essentially my coach as I'm a beginner in that field uh, and you know much better, but essentially, Austin, uh, he identified uh, intermediary based in Switzerland who does crowdfunding for some reputable organization, as you can see on their website, which uh, I just shared the link with you yesterday. And we are just have an embryonic campaign going. Uh, Austin kindly helped me to get it started, but we obviously need more help. And I'm looking here more to the digital natives and the millennials. Uh, I may well be too old for that, but Austin, please. Hi, my name is Austin Ruckstuhl, for the record. Um, I was happy to help Marcus build a uh, fundraising campaign. Closer so, to the microphone, Austin. Can you still hear me? Yeah, okay. So, um, yeah, so we created this fundraising campaign on a website called GiveGain because they do accept uh, Swiss bank accounts, which is where the bank account for this charity is based. Um, and it's pretty straightforward. It's, there's a bigger campaign that I called just hashtag love the IGF. And the idea is to create your own fundraising page or donate to the fundraising page, either one, and then share it on your social networks. You can share the link to donate on the 
the page itself or to your personalized fundraising page. It's a crowdfunding campaign, like peer to peer. Um, and yeah, so you can share it on Twitter and say, I love the IGF because they, uh, you know, it does this or this for me or for the IGF in my country or my region and encourage your network to donate. Um, yeah, it's, it's pretty straightforward. I just came up with a very general campaign. It can kind of be our first year, just hashtag love the IGF, uh, just to get people talking or sharing on social, but you're more than welcome to propose a different marketing campaign. Uh, we need imagery, so if you're an M NRI and you have approved photos that we could use to really make the content look more appealing with high-res photos, then that would be more than welcome. And that's pretty much it. Uh, yeah, so feel free to create your own fundraising page or donate directly to the fundraising page, send it to businesses, uh, anybody can donate. And you can donate in US dollars even though it is a Swiss account. Thank you. Thank you for that. Uh, so obviously there we will rely on the members to help us to do the crowdfunding. And I also would hope that one of the board members would uh, take also uh, responsibility uh, for that. Would you like to say, yeah, Makan, please? Thank you, uh, Marcus. Uh, thank you for uh, suggesting crowdfunding, which is also a very good uh, idea. Uh, I have also some other suggestions, because uh, I think uh, 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 an organization, institution which is getting funding uh, to get $3,500 or uh, $2,500 should be a member. I, I don't know how the assembly will view it, but uh, my uh, suggestion is really to make sure that there are members, paying members, before they receive the funds. Because you, they pay $100, dollar, they receive 2500 or 3500 Why don't you suggest that? I think it's important. For the African region, I also have a suggestion. The country, some members have a problem of paying the funds in foreign currency, you know, $25 sending and so on. But uh, me, I make myself available to the African members or potential members if I can direct them to someone in their country to give the funds and I'll pay on their behalf. Thank you. Thank you for this suggestion. I think there were plenty to discuss, but we will not have time to go into that. My suggestion would be then to really have this discussion started after this uh, General Assembly and uh, also with the incoming uh, new board members. Yes. Thanks, but I would just like to make a comment. Um, IGFSA is incorporated in Switzerland, and while this may not be illegal for a uh, not-for-profit in Switzerland, what we think of as tying, that is having a requirement that you are a member, that you have paid money to be a member in order to receive funding, would potentially create um, uh, interesting attention to um, um, the not-for-profit by the um, U.S. So, for instance, if we were to decide in the future that to make it easy to collect funds from uh, companies and foundations that are based in the United States, and we created a parallel um, association, which many do, um, we would have significant difficulties if we would create that kind of requirement. You have to pay us money, so we will pay you money. And I'm just looking at um, Austin, because I think there are just reputational reflections about that as well. But perhaps we could do more conversation about that. Thank you. Uh, Jennifer, where are we with the counting? Uh, you haven't got my vote yet. <laughs> I got some, I got some. Right, has everyone handed in the ballot paper? Seems to be the case, yeah. And while the counting goes on, can I ask then the General Assembly to uh, 
discharge of the activity of the executive committee. That is, I think it's a term translated directly from the French into English. Uh, décharge means essentially to uh, approve the activity and means they are not responsible anymore for what happened in the past. It's, but I don't think it's used in legal English as such. It's of a, a French version of it. But in any case, we would like to ask our members to say, yes, you have done maybe not an excellent job, but everything is okay and done in legally according to the bylaws, which is obviously important that we respect whatever we do, that we are in accordance with our bylaws. Can I ask for this vote of décharge, as we are in Paris, I think we can say it in French. <laughs> Est-ce que l'Assemblée Générale est d'accord de décharger le comité exécutif? Is the General Assembly agreeable to discharge the executive committee? We, I can see heads nodding, I can see nobody protesting, so I take it then that we have been discharged of our responsibilities. Is there any other item under any other business? Doesn't seem to be the case, so we are, oh, Marilyn, please. Um, thank you, Mike, it's Marilyn Cade speaking. Um, we didn't go into detail the uh, fact that we don't have a village booth this time but we will have uh, some of our flyers in, I think, the shared NRI booth. Does it, does it mean shared between IGFSA and the NRIs? The title of the NRI booth is called Shared Booth because it is multiple NRIs. And we'll be putting our flyers in it for those who might want additional copies. And I just wanted to be sure to reinforce that for people. Thank you. Yes, there's some flyers there already. I left some there. and. Uh, uh, that said, again, we tried, but I hope very much that next year we'll be able again to have a common booth, and I would then also rely on the members. In the previous years, we were able to rely on a dedicated member from ISOC staff who sat there all the time, but we don't have that luxury anymore, but we uh, hopefully we should be able to manage by our members that we actually have somebody there in the rotational principle. We don't ask members to sit there all the time, but if we take it in turns, two hours here, two hours there, it should be possible to have a booth, and I hope it will be possible next year. With that, we have finished our business, and we uh, wait with uh, excitement and trepidation for the result of our uh, election to the executive committee. I can see a lot of counting is going on there. Yes, while we're waiting for the uh, end, uh, Marilyn would like to make a commercial for the NRI session. Yes. Okay, Babu. In, in between, can we discuss about how we can make, uh, maximize uh, the, this IGFSA platform uh, with local IGFs? I mean, we have been supporting various IGFs and we are just mentioning we supported so-and-so IGFs. So why not to have more uh, engagement of our supported IGF in our platform and we coordinated, we, we coordinate more engagement to support not only from funding rather than uh, from concept and, and designing, you know, many IGFs are uh, not uh, under part of the process of IGF. So why not to have that kind of uh, discussion in our platform as well? That will be definitely help uh, our uh, local IGFs to grow 
people day by day. Thank you. Well, we do that in a modest way already by organizing the meetings, Marilyn said. Essentially, we have been relying quite often back to back on, on, on ICANN meetings, but also on NRI meetings, the informal contacts. But it is part of our scope article that we facilitate the exchanges between NRIs and the global IGF. And of course, we can always do more, we can always do better. And, uh, suggestions and ideas are welcome. But Marilyn, you wanted to uh, introduce briefly the NRI session. Thank you, Marcus, and Babu, thank you for that suggestion. Um, there are six opportunities to uh, hear NRI speak, and one of them is the main session, which is tomorrow, which is about the um, evolution of, inter of internet governance, and it is um, in Salah One, um, Salam One, because it is the main session. There will be um, somewhere between roughly 25 to 34 NRIs who will be speaking. We have policy questions, and if you go um, on the uh, website, um, the schedule, you'll be able to see the lineup. Um, this is going to be a very fast-paced session. Normally, we have a three-hour, at least a two-hour session or a three-hour session. Um, the, then there are four uh, NRI collaborative sessions touching on such things as access and another one on fake news, two more that I'm not going to go into, but when you look at the schedule, it says NRI. And then there's also a um, consultative session, which is tomorrow again, that follows the NRI main session. That is a consultation between the NRIs and DESA and the Secretariat. But it is an open session, the room is large, and we urge all of you to come to listen to the exchange between the NRIs and DESA and the Secretariat. So it's not in any way sponsored by IGFSA, I don't mean to imply that it is, and it is the NRI speaking on their own behalf about things that they think, and Babu, I think this will be a place to raise questions as well about how um, activities that are related to uh, the IGF um, Secretariat and DESA um, can be more helpful to the, the NRIs. So those are places to uh, meet other NRIs and the family of each NRI, because for many of the NRIs, there are multiple people here um, so it would be a good opportunity. Again, main session tomorrow, followed by the consultation session between the NRIs and DESA and the Secretariat, and then four remaining sessions that are uh, called N NRI um, collaborative sessions. Thank you for that, and allow me also one comment. I think uh, our modest contributions to the NRIs has also had a a positive side effect that it has forced, as we make our contribution contingent on their being recognized by the Secretariat, and in essence that means have you written your report that has had a, led to a greater discipline in reporting. Before, the Secretariat always had to chase the reports, and quite often they did not file reports, but now I think thanks to our contribution, it's a bit carrot and stick. If they want the carrot, uh, then they need to provide a report, and that has led to a greater coherence among this, the various NRIs and the entire network. So how are we doing, vote counters? Almost finished. Okay, okay, almost finished, so we, we wait with excitement.
can you also tell us then how many ballots cast, how many valid ballots, and that sort of thing? And we have been amazingly efficient, actually. We're still not quarter to three, and we would have been finished had we been allowed to start when we were uh, supposed to start. Do we have the results? Our MAG members are returning. <laughs> Have you voted rem uh, by email? Oh, there's someone. Sorry for jumping in. I guess uh, for those of you who still want to put in your vote, I, I, I guess you, you can. Yes, please, please do uh, come to the front. Jen, you're going to have to put the list back up. Sorry. You're going to have to put the list back up. Maybe we could just ask how many people still need to vote. No, but we're putting the list back up. Oh, I just heard from... Jacqueline Morris, that she was sitting in front of the camera at the IGF remote hub. But it seems it didn't work out. Are you ready to announce the result? We have votes still coming in. Still coming in? Yes. We have six people here. Excuse, can, can I just ask for the MAG members have come in, Wisdom and Mary and I think, yeah, so we have at least four people. Um, you, do you still need to see the names in order to vote?
Excuse me, may I ask to which email should we send the uh, votes? Or it's not an email, how to make the votes? Uh, you so had he, hand, uh, yeah, you wanted the piece of paper or? And for those who are came in, you write your name on a separate paper so it can be checked. I mean, we assume we have changed our bylaws and only members who are in good standing, that is members who have paid their membership dues, are entitled to vote. So we trust you have paid, but the Secretariat will still check it. So please write your name on a separate paper so that can be checked. And the names of the four people you choose for uh, the executive committee. If you haven't paid, you can pay as you go on. Give 25 euros to Jennifer, and then you are in good standing if you haven't paid your annual fee yet. It's one way of extracting money. <laughs> if you have done, you can give it to Jennifer. I can't hear. You, you, Jennifer, Jennifer, you can't. You have to take the votes in the room and add to it. You can't announce the results. Okay. Okay. We're only waiting for the remaining votes from the room. So you can hand it once you've done it. Hand the paper to Jennifer, please. Yes. Uh, there are some who have voted remotely and they all received the confirmation from the Secretariat that they, their vote has been taken into account. Jennifer, you received an email, yes. Are we just waiting for the votes of these two ladies there? Now we have everybody's vote, correct? There's nobody left in the room who hasn't cast his or her vote.
By the way, I have still some buttons left in case anybody would like one of these buttons. <laughs> pins for the bu pins for the buttonhole, yeah, buttons for the pinhole, yes. <laughs> Out. Right, I think our secretary has the election results. Please read them out. Thank you, Marcus, and thank you, everyone, for your patience. We've received in total 25 in person votes and six remote votes that were all counted, and everybody was an active member who, who voted. Um, in order of um, in order of the votes received, uh, according to the list above, we received two votes for Kosi Amesino. Uh, we received 23 votes for Marilyn Cade. We received 18 votes for Avri Doria. We received 16 votes for Makan Fain. We received seven votes for Jacqueline Morris. We received 18 votes for Nemini. Uh, Ruben, sorry for mispronouncing your name. We received seven votes for Miguel Estrada, and we received six votes for Babu Ram Aryal. And the, um, we actually received um, a tie for the second uh, uh, um, number of votes. So in order of the total votes received, I take it that we have Marilyn, Avri, Makan, and Nilmini elected as executive. The vote of Nilmini is not listed there, but as I heard. Sorry, I was just advised by Yanis there's the remote votes that were added to the total list, and I will reread the, the total numbers, and except the uh, actual numbers are the same um, as I've read before. So for Kossi, we received a total of three votes. For Marilyn, we received a total of 26 votes. For Avery, we received a total of 23 votes. For Makan, we received a total of 20 votes. For Jacqueline, we received seven votes. For Numini, we received a total of 20 votes. For Miguel, we received a total of nine votes. And for Babu, we received six votes. Uh, it, this looks a bit misleading there with the names, but uh, Jacqueline Morris gives 20 votes, but I think it was the other way around. Yes, yes. It Jacqueline, Nilmini had 20, I think. Well, anyway, I take it we have four members that are elected. That's Marilyn, Avri, Makan, and Nilmini. Is that correct? That is correct. Thank you, Marcus. Okay. With that, I think I welcome the new members to our executive committee. Welcome, Nirmini and Makan. And I welcome back Avri and Marilyn. And with that, I close our General Assembly. Thank you very much for attending and for being so efficient. Thank you. Marcus? 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 Hello? Marcus? Is... Hi, Mark. Is this a spillover room for the event still? Marcus? Hello? I'm asking if this is the spillover room for the main session. Still is the spillover room? Yes, I think we are requested to close our meetings immediately because there's a spillover room here. All for right, the thank you. Opening, thank you.
board meetings now that people are elected.